From Hollywood, NBC brings you Hedda Hopper. Hedda Hopper, who daily reports to 30 million readers in America and eight foreign countries, now reports to you on the air. Here is Hedda Hopper's Hollywood, from the desk by the window looking right down on Hollywood and Vine. And here she is, Hedda Hopper. Hello, everybody. Look over my shoulder while I write my column. We'll have news about famous people here and elsewhere. And personal visits with Jimmy McHugh, Harold Adamson, Andre Previn, Gordon McRae, and Mr. and Mrs. Richard Conte. Okay, let's go. Danny Kaye plays the life of Hans Christian Andersen on the screen with that beautiful ballet dancer of red shoes, Morris Shira. Glenn McCarthy hit the ceiling when it was suggested that for his next picture, he have a story written based on his daughter's secret marriage to the son of a cobbler. Ida Lupino will soon have the same sort of job in the State Department that Myrna Loy enjoys. As a member of UNESCO, she goes to Washington and Lake Success in February. Helen Cahagan wasn't acceptable to the citizens of the state of California as senator, so what? So now she's representing the whole United States in the United Nations. Plenty of excitement at Mike Romanoff's home New Year's Eve when Oscar Levant, who drank nothing but coffee, disliked the way Walter Wanger was dancing with his wife and pushed him so hard he fell to his knees. Then George Raft came up from behind and acted as peacemaker. Well, a Raft saved Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> Ruth Roman's new mother-in-law, Dorothy Schiff, was in town last week and gifted Ruth with a diamond bracelet. Ethel Barrymore during the holidays came down with the flu and hasn't been able to shake it off. So her picture was closed down until she's completely recovered. One of the busiest girls in town is Dorothy Lamore. She's learning to swing by her teeth for the greatest show on earth and packing like mad to go to Florida on location. We thought Dottie would be with us this week, but she'll join us next Sunday. The great names of Hollywood got their start in all sorts of ways. Ever since I've had a radio column in NBC, I wanted to tell the story of the famous young man who got his start at NBC in New York, believe it or not, in the men's washroom. <laughs> his name? Gordon McRae. I caught up with Gordon the other day over at Capitol Records. They were recording the music from Cole Porter's current Broadway hit, Out of This World. And Gordon, of course, was doing exactly the same thing as he started out doing in that washroom, singing a song called, I Am Love. I am love. I am love. By the one. thing to be able to say I'm a dog I'm a dog by the one who first led my heart astray I'm a dog absolutely a dog what a wonderful thing to be able to say. So ring out the bells and let the trumpets blow and beat on the drums. For now I know, I know, I am love. I am love. What a wonderful thing, what a glorious thing, what a beautiful thing to be able to say. So ring out the bells and let the trumpets blow. the 
beautiful thing, what a glorious thing, what a beautiful thing to be able to serve. Gordon, you are loved. And that was beautiful. Well, thanks very much, Edda. But about that washroom, let's get it straight. I, uh, see, I was working as a page boy, and I used to run in there for a quick smoke, uh, where the boss wouldn't catch me. Then somebody spotted you and made you a model for a cigarette ad. Well, not exactly, Hedda. You see, I was singing away when a fellow from Horace Heights Band walked in. And, well, that led to my very first break. So, you see, it never pays to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> oh, oh, by golly, that's a good one. <laughs> And thanks, Gordon McRae. Back at the office, I wrote this advice to NBC page boys. Gordon McRae has been voted one of America's top ten male singers. He's a big star at Warner Brothers who produced Operation Pacific. Yes, your co-worker is on the top. So if you have a voice as good as his, spend more time ducking out for a smoke. Sometimes where there's smoke, there's higher. <laughs> Lana Tenner's singing was so good in the picture she made with Pinza that they've added another song for her. You belong to my heart. Hollywood will certainly roll out the red carpet when Lord Beatty arrives here to visit Merle Oberon. Collier Young's telling friends he'll marry Joan Fontaine as soon as she's free. But he's not yet divorced from Ida Lupino. Nancy Guild hasn't set the marriage date with Ernie Martin, producer of Guys and Dolls in New York. She hopes he'll come west so they can have the knot tied here. Sally Forrest was all set to marry her agent, Milo Frank. Now she's very indefinite about it. Could it be that her agent got her so many picture jobs that she has no time for matrimony? Deanna Durbin and her new husband returned to Hollywood in March. The word genius gets kicked around a lot out here. It's a word I try to avoid. But I have no reservations about using it in connection with a young man named Andre Previn. I haven't been seeing Andre much lately. His last picture was Three Little Words at Metro. As musical director, he scored and conducted the music for it, and he's a candidate for an Oscar. And guess how old he is? 21. Well, as I said, I haven't seen Andre much lately, but the other day I caught him walking down the street, and immediately I thought of the last time we'd met. It was on the set, and during a break, Andre sat down at the piano. think Andrew Previn has genius. There's another thing I didn't tell you. Andrew was wearing the uniform of a corporal in the United States Army. 
June Allison discovered a new way to reduce. The day after the birth of her son, she weighed five pounds less than she'd weighed in ten years. <laughs> she said having a baby is much easier than making pictures. Dick Powell doesn't agree, and he took off for Palm Springs to rest. <laughs> it's a wonder Gypsy Rose Lee was allowed to finish her engagement at Las Vegas. She took a five-year-old son along and put his electric train under the Christmas tree in the lobby of the Desert Inn Hotel. All the men left the gambling tables to play with the train. John Wayne's in Mexico for ten days visiting his wife, who's been ill four months. I asked John how he became the number one box office star, and he replied, I guess I just got out of bed every morning and went to work. In the past few years, the name of Richard Conte has loomed bigger and bigger on the Hollywood horizon. And well, it might. He's a fine actor, one of the best. There's another Conte in town whose following is, so far, has been limited primarily to stage audiences, but whose critical notices read as extravagantly as her husband's. She's Ruth Conte, Dick's wife. Next week, when Dick finishes Hollywood story at Universal International, the two of them will team up for a raid on New York City. Objective, to find a play which they can do together. Being heartily in favor of husband and wife teams, I paid a visit to the Contes. I wanted a world's preview of Dick and Ruth starring together for the very first time. Thieves Highway? Sure, I remember that one. It was one of your best, Dick. But I also thought since it has such a good part for a girl... The girl in the picture did quite all right by it, Hedda. And so will you, Ruth. Well, let's see. Thieves Highway. It was a story of a guy in the produce business. Writer named A.I. Bizarities, based it on his own novel, Thieves Market. It had a lot of color. Well, you're doing fine, Dick. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Conte, you're on. You would think that driving a truckload of fruit would be as dull as dishwater. Well, brother, you're wrong. Say you're a guy like me, Nick Garkos. You sink all the money you own into a truck and a load of golden, delicious apples. The first of the season, worth their weight in gold. You drive 700 miles to get them down to San Francisco. You get to a big produce market, the thieves' market, in the middle of the night. And you park in front of the warehouse owned by a Mike Figlia, and you wait for him to show up. But you've had no sleep, and you're dead on your feet. You've got a fresh cut on your neck where you're bumped against your truck. You wipe your hand like that on your neck, it'll give you blood poisoning. Huh? Well, what's the matter with you, sister? There, you did it again. Where are your neck cut, Dopey? Oh, that, that's just grease. Don't touch it. Blood. Come on with me and I'll fix it for you. <laughs> It isn't the Ritz, but it's the best I've got. Anyhow, you can see where your truck's parked from the window. Yeah, it's a nice place you've got. Oh. Hey, it's a soft couch. Ever try sleeping in a truck? <laughs> you get a steering wheel in your ear. You can sit down. No steering wheels in that couch. Here, take this. You need it. Here's to friendship. Long and sweet. But I'll pass up the drink. It uh, put me right to sleep. What's the matter? Don't you like girls? Sure I like girls. Always wished I had a kid sister. Wearing pigtails down her hair, giggling behind her hand and throwing sparks out of her eyes. You were somebody's kid sister once. And look at me now. You look nice. Nice face, nice eyes. But you look like chipped glass. Do I? Yeah, how do you feel inside when you look like glass? I feel fine. I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Don't touch me. <laughs> Why did I do that? Here, hold still. I'll fix your neck. I got some iodine. How did it happen? I'm trying to jack up my truck with the back of my neck. You know, I got apples on that truck. Beautiful apples. I sunk every penny I have into... Ah! Hey, that stuff stinks. I'm sorry. I don't know your name. Oh, Nick Garkos. What's yours? Rika. In just a second, I've got a Band-Aid. There. Uh, you've got soft hands, Rika. But sharp nails. You like to make tough, huh? I am tough. Me? I never had pigtails. Do you like how I wear my hair? No. But come here. Don't. Well, what's the matter? I thought that's what you wanted. That truck of yours out there. Huh? You don't know it, but you've got it parked in front of the biggest crook in the market, Mike Figlia. I know that. You do? Yeah. Figlia jipped my old man out of a truckload of tomatoes while I wasn't around. 
They got him drunk so the old man wouldn't know he was never paid. That's tough. Got him so drunk, Pop turned his truck over. Lost both his legs. I see. Better take a look out there. Figley is stealing your apples, sucker. Selling them from the truck. What? He paid me here to get you up here so he could do that. Why, you dirty little... I'm not stealing your apples, Turos. I'm selling them. It's strictly legal. You've already sold them, you mean. They're my apples. It's my place. Your truck's stalled in front of. Go on, call a cop. The law says I can unload your truck. You're interfering with my establishment of business, aren't you? Leaving a stalled truck, it can't be moved because the tires are all flat? Flat? Yeah, on the bottom. Sure. Just a little bit flat on the bottom. You slashed them. Did I? Anyway, I sold the apples. But Mike Figley is a fair man. What do you say would be a fair price to pay you, huh? Six and a half bucks a box. Uh, six and a half is the price I got. I'm talking about your end. Your end of nothing is nothing. <laughs> You're a tough kid. Okay, we split. Three and a quarter for you Six and... Six fifty for me. Listen, you cheap little peddler. I was in this business when you were sucking a bottle. You probably got that load for a buck, buck and a half a box. I'm giving you more money than you ever saw in your life. When'd you ever make more than a day's pay, you truck jockey? Look, Figley, you don't know me, but I know you. And you cut my tires. You got that dame to get me out of the way while you did it. While you sold my... <laughs> so she told you, huh? <laughs> okay, okay, kid. The joke's on me. Give me my money, all of it. Sure, sure. After all, like I say, Mike Figley is a fair man. Here. You see? I like you. I don't like you. 3,900 bucks. Here. Yeah, it's quite a killing. Yeah. Only take good care of it, Chaco. Don't lose it. I can't figure you out, Rika. You set me up for Figley at a jiffy and then tell me what he was doing. Why? I wore pigtails once. But that was a long time ago. Uh, you're not really tough. Who do you think you're fighting? You're only taking it out on yourself. <laughs> well, what's breaking you up? What's so funny? Isn't that sweet? He wants to save me. Go ahead, lover. Tell me what a bad girl I am. I'm lost unless you save me. Look, I don't care. I'll never see you again after tonight. That's right. Never again. Kiss me goodbye. Goodbye, lover. Nick, look out! <laughs> Once a sucker, twice a sucker. When I came to, the money was gone. Oh, Nick. What did they do to you? Give me my money. Nick. Give me my money or I'll kill you. You got my wallet, didn't you? No. Two guys named Frenchie and Mitch, they didn't. But you'll meet them later and get your share. No, Nick. You set me up for Mitch and Frenchie. Where do they live? Where do they live? New Bay Hotel, but don't go there. Nah. To them, life is very cheap. Nick, go to the police. Ain't you afraid if I go to the police? Go to the police. I'm trying to help you, Nick. Mitch and Frenchie work for Figlia, but you don't have to worry. Dirty your hands on Figlia. Yes, I do. When I get through with that guy, he won't pull any more tricks. He gave it to my old man and to me, and a lot of guys like me. And I'm going to give it back to him, but good. Nick, they'll kill you. I caught up with Figley in a little bar. He was very pleased with himself. He stopped laughing when he saw me. I had an axe handle I picked up in the truck. Go on and laugh, Figley. It's good for the lungs. Finish your drink. Suddenly, I don't like the company. I'm leaving. Sit down. Listen, cocky boy. You got your money. There are ten witnesses. I know you got it. That's right. I got to shut up. Come! Come! You're crazy. You broke my hand with that axe handle. And does my pop have to shut up? You cut off his leg. Put your hand back on the table. I'll split your skull. No. no. Put it down. No, don't hit me, Lobo, please. I, I was going to pay your old man. I was going to show you the check in my office. But here. Here's the cash. Here. Hey, you see, I'm paying you. What about the door you rolled me for? You had Rika set me up for those guys, didn't you? No. No, they did it for me. 
If you didn't know nothing about it. Well, I'll make it right to you. You see? This pays for everything, don't it? Here. Oh, why don't you take the money? Not before I pay you first. No! Oh! For my pop! For my pop! For my pop! For my pop! You wipe your hand like that on your eyes, it'll give you mascara poisoning. Nick. There, you did it again. Where well, you've been crying, Dopey. I haven't been. That's just... Oh, Nick, are you all right? Sure. The truck's downstairs. Come on, we're getting out of here, you and me. We're going to stick together. But, Nick, look at me. No pigtails. I like the way you wear your hair. Thank you, Dick and Ruth Conte, and good luck in Manhattan. Lex Barker, the new Tarzan, met the original, Elmo Lincoln, the other night and asked the old-timer the difference between the Tarzan then and now. Replied Elmo, in my day, our lions had teeth. <laughs> Mario Lanza was offered a private car to travel in while touring from coast to coast on the concert tour. He turned it down. With war on, nobody should take up that much space on the railroad, said Mario. John Steinbeck arrives next week and will spend his honeymoon in Palm Springs writing a screen story for Daryl Zanuck. This afternoon, Spike Jones signed a contract with NBC for an hour's TV show which starts February 11th. On Thursday night, I went to the world premiere of 20th Century's Fox picture, Halls of Montezuma, a story of Marines starring Richard Widmark. As part of the occasion, Tony Martin sang the Marine Corps hymn, and I pricked up my ears when I heard that he was singing some new words. The next morning, I looked up the two men responsible. They were top songwriters, Harold Adamson and Jimmy McHugh. Now, Hedda, don't think for a moment we thought we could improve on the great Marine hymn. We didn't change any lyrics. We just added to them. Yes, you see, we felt that since Iwo Jima and Korea, there was a lot more to be said. Well, Harold, you two certainly did a beautiful job for the Air Corps. I know, when you wrote Coming In on a Wing and a Prayer. Well, thank you, Hedda. Now we're real proud to be able to pay our tribute to the Marines. Jimmy, they and the rest of the boys certainly deserve every tribute we can give them right now. How do you think America will like these new lyrics? Well, Hedda, let's find out right now. Let's put it on the air. That's fine. It's a world premiere. From the halls of Montezuma To the shores of Tripoli We fight our country battles On the land and on the sea Admiration of the nation We're the finest ever seen And we glory in the title Of United States Marine From the halls of Montezuma To the shores of any sea You will find the fighting leathernecks Pushing on to victory You can talk of planes and battleships but the greatest war machine Is the fighting heart and spirit of A United States Marine
18 United States Marines played in the halls of Montezuma. Then they fought in Korea. 16 were wounded, and the 16 returned to attend the premiere of that same picture here two nights ago. The other two boys gave their lives in Korea. And why am I telling you all this? Because this time we can't have politics as usual and finish first. This is a moment for wisdom of words and actions. Wisdom in our foreign policy and its direction. Wisdom in our military affairs at home as well as abroad. This is the moment of Americans for America. The moment we must all stand and be counted. So let's boot out the chiselers, the doubters, and the disloyal now. <laughs> bring you Hedda Hopper with news of the stars of the stars that make news. We'll visit with a woman who made history in Manila during the last war. Her name is Claire Phillips and she was an American spy. There'll be a dramatic highlight by last year's Academy Award winner, Dean Jagger. And to top it off, a hot and heavy argument with Dorothy Lemour. Good night, everybody. <laughs> And make a date for next Sunday for Hedda Hopper's Hollywood. From the ringside seat, the desk by the window looking right down on Hollywood and Vine. The Hedda Hopper Show is an FMB production directed by Gil Faust and with music by Frank Worth. <laughs>